Everybody and welcome to another edition of Inside Triton Fights. I am your host Dan Canobio, and today we are talking all things Triton Fights 12 as we get closer and closer to April 12th when we'll be streaming right here on BR Live. It's an absolutely jam-packed card featuring some of the very best talent in the mixed martial arts world. Main event for this card is the featherweight title that will be on the line. Vilsan Joni taking on Azulan Kusayanov. That fight is going to be straight flames. Uh, the middleweight title also on the line when Kareem Klein steps into the cage taking on Ryan Charlebois. Both those fighters do not like each other. There is a lot of storylines in this fight. Kareem Klein fought Rick Huntsman in his last fight, picked up the uh, Triton Fight's middleweight title. <laughs> Rick Huntsman is the coach of uh, Ryan Charlebois. So Ryan Charlebois will be out for revenge come uh, April 12th. At uh, Triton Fights 12, a jam-packed card with uh, Tom Picciano as a fighter that is on the rise in the featherweight division. We're going to speak to him in just in a little bit. He goes up against Kelvin Sterling, who was the brother of Aljamain Sterling, uh, UFC superstar. Andrew Stock gets back into the cage going up against Tim Ring. Alex Brown, uh, we'll see him in action. And Bobby Casal, also from Long Island MMA, one of the best gyms in the Northeast, a gym that produced six winners at Triton Fights 11 at our, our last uh, event. And starting off the card, junior middleweight that you don't want to miss. This kid, Jason Downer, I'm telling you right now, the kid is a star. He is a a freakish athlete. Uh, he comes from Jamaica. Uh, he comes with the Jamaica funk, and he is a great great uh, MMA fighter. Also on this show, my broadcast partner, Dave DeLaraga, who'll be calling the fights with me uh, on April 12th at Triton Fights 12. We're going to have a segment here called Rolling with D-Rock. Uh, Dave is a world-class jiu-jitsu fighter. He is a uh, trainer. He is a coach, and he's going to be interviewing fighters while rolling on the ground with them. Uh, that one is going to be interesting, but first, we have a fighter interview with uh, middleweight Kareem Klein. this too yeah popped up in my house yeah y'all i was coming out of the gym today and some dude in a coach just handed me this sh i have been called many things in my lifetime destroyer of worlds crazy obsessed violence to be honest i am nothing more than a collector of things i am now on a hunt to collect the most skilled warriors of the human race those chosen will have the honor to fight at the Triton Fights. This is your day. Train hard, fight harder. Your legacy hangs in the balance. On April 12th at the space at Westbury, Triton Fights 12 goes down and stepping into the cage that night, defending his middleweight belt, Kareem Klein. He joins us right now on Inside Triton Fights. Kareem, my man, how's life since you picked up that strap? Uh, life's well. I'm well. How's the camp going? Talk to us, man. Let us know what's going on. It, it's good. You know what I mean? Just, just you know, sharpening up the tools, getting ready. The busy... The biggest obstacle is always cutting weight, so that's what I'm focused on, just getting better and getting my weight down. Well, you look pretty trim right there. You look like you're, you're, in, you're in good shape. How's camp going? How's everything uh, with no limits and, and your stable mates? Yeah, uh, everything's good. You know, they're always pushing me. We have a lot of upcoming fighters fighting, so we're all pushing each other. We're getting each other ready. You know, April's going to be a big month for us at no limits. Now, going back to, to your last fight when you picked up the middleweight title, uh, you know, I've been uh, along for your journey since you started uh, at Triton Fights, and it was a great night for you. It was a great win over Rick Huntsman. And uh, the first two rounds, you seem to do whatever you want in there, some good takedowns, uh, some good stuff on the ground. And that third round, I think, is where you really earned that title when uh, Rick kind of, like, sold out a little bit. You got, you know, got dazed a little bit, but you bounced back. 
and you and you won that fight. Take us through that fight and, and what it meant to you to win the title and you know kind of going through the ringer against a, a, a bigger guy in there. Yeah, so it it was it, he was a lot longer than I anticipated. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He was what six five. His reach was longer than mine, and I hadn't really faced anyone with reach as long as mine or longer. So it was definitely different. The game plan was to get inside, take him down, you know, dirty box him a little bit. I know he's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu, purple belt, or something like that. And I'm I'm personally still a white belt because I don't train gi that, that much. I, I train no gi. So I didn't want to – when he took my back in the third, I didn't want to give him too much. So I kind of turned it up. He, he was just tapping me. It wasn't really too much. But I, I, I heard the ref saying – Kareem, show me something. Kareem, you have to move. And at that point, I was like, I'm not let, I'm not getting TKO'd in the third round. And I already felt like I was winning the first two rounds because I had his back against the wall. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I have to get out. And I hear my coach saying, Kareem, you can't – Coach Steve from Freedom Jiu-Jitsu saying, Kareem, you can't stay there. Kareem, you can't stay there. I'm like, I, I knew I couldn't stay there. So, like, I felt an opening. He's the one we got. So I felt the opening from, the, from underneath. And I just – I came out. And I came out swinging because in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm – in my mind, I had the first two rounds, and I didn't want him being on my back for the entire round for him to be a 10 round. Well, not only that, I mean, uh, it was an unanimous decision. So but all the judges had you up to two rounds to nothing. So you, you're right. You had to uh, – you had it in the bag if, if you didn't even know. But moving forward, on April 12th, you're going to defend the belt for the first time, taking on Ryan Charleboy, 5-0. and uh, he's been chirping a lot on Instagram. He's been talking a lot of smack. Uh, he's upset his face isn't on the flyer. That's right behind us. This great work. Uh, what do you What do you know about your opponent? We'll get to the trash talk and all that stuff. But what do you know about him? You know X's and O's wise. I just know that uh, he should keep his mouth shut. That's what I know. <laughs> I, as you know, Dan, you follow my career since the beginning, and I used to draw back and forth, and I realized that that doesn't do much. You know what I mean? Like all it does is add uh, to. It brings emotion into the fight, you know? Mm-hmm. So now, instead of going back and forth, I do what I have to do in the cage. So, you know, it only it excites me when someone talks shit so he can keep talking his shit. But when I break his face, it's he'll know I'm breaking it a little more because all that shit he's talking. And it's also, there's a lot of some, some juicy storylines here. I mean, you defeated Rick Huntsman, as we just highlighted, who's the Ryan Charleboy's coach. So there, you know, there's a little, there's more than just the average, you know, you know, chirping going back and forth you know i'm sure huntsman wants uh to get some revenge and is going to try to do it with with, with one of his stable mates in charlie boy yeah from what i hear you know charlie boy little charlie boy is coming up in a weight class so you know I, i've watched his fights i'm not impressed you know what i mean he throws these overhands he tries to take people down who is he fighting he's fighting guys who look like they don't want to get hit i'll get hit i've been hit i'm not afraid to get hit Wait, is he ready to get hit? Yeah, that's the thing. And I, we talk about your career and, and, and the come up for you. You, I think you represent everything that's right about Triton fights. You've been through the ringer. Uh, you had those two great fights with Mackenzie Heaton, you know, one where you got knocked out, one where you, you avenged the loss and, and you won. And there was a lot. That's when you talk when you talk about the, the back and forth. There was no more, you know, back and forth and, and shit talk than you and Mackenzie Heaton. And I feel like you've grown from that. And when you got that title, I was happy to see that you picked up that strap because you have improved so much uh, since that first fight you had with Triton. And do you feel the same way? Thanks, Dan. I absolutely do feel I, that I've improved so much. When I took my first fight with Triton, uh, I was a little raw. I was going to jujitsu, but I wasn't really working on my stand-up, and it showed. And I won my first fight, and you know, my I'm a narcissist. I'm a, you know. Well, you got to be I'm if you're a fighter. Guy, right? But but I, I won my first fight and my confidence was through the roof and, and and I just jumped into another fight and I kept jumping into fights right and eventually I had to look and I'm like well I trained with Jeremy I trained with Ryan at the time Jeremy was a champ Ryan was about to fight for Triton fights and it was like what are they doing that I'm not doing and what were they doing Jeremy was Jeremy's been training with Rick Schaefer for a long time so I I went. You know, and I, and I experienced the environment. I was like, oh, wow, like, this is what I need to be doing. And ever so, which, cha- which really changed since my first fight to now is that I've been, well, not my first fight. It was my third fight. It was after, I joined Rick's gym, I want to say three weeks before mm-hmm. I, I fought McKenzie for the first time. Wow. So, you know, there were, he, he saw my second fight and he's like, all right, you know, head down, 
hands up. And, and those were the basics. That's what we started working on. And we just built from there. Then like I, I could barely throw a, a straight one, too, <laughs> when I first started. Because I was just used to fighting in the streets. Right. You know what I mean? Fighting after school. I, I You know, everyone anticipates, oh, yeah, I, I fought someone. I beat someone up in the backyard. or I beat someone in the park. Like, I'm going to go in and I'm going to rip his head off. Yeah, there's much more of it than that, right? Yeah, they say most fights last for, like, what, like a minute and, and 12 seconds? You know, this is three three-minute rounds. And, and when you want to go to the pro level, it starts off as three five-minute rounds. So, you know, yeah, I, I'm just grateful that I... I had the ability to to train with Rick Schaefer and train at No Limits, and I'm improving my stand up and my wrestling is getting better because I'm going to Freedom Jiu Jitsu and I'm doing Jiu Jitsu. We have wrestling classes with Coach Phil, and I feel like my game is all around improving. Yeah, definitely much improved since those early days of your career. Now, April twelfth, you step back foot into that cage as the middleweight champion uh, for Triton Fights. What can fans expect on April twelfth? I I'm ready to make a statement. I'm ready to make a statement. All of my, except for my first fight, I've worked every single fight. My last fight, I was exhausted coming into the fight because I was working FedEx and I delivered over 180 stops, over 200 something packages. And it's already a lot when you deliver 150. So I delivered, oh, I made overtime. That's how much I worked. And it just, it pissed me off because, you know, I asked my boss at the time, if he could give me less stops, because he usually does that. But he thought I needed less stops because I had another job to work. Not, But he, I told him that I was fighting. <laughs> and I told him it was my most important fight moving f- like like mm-hmm. to this day. Did he understand so, that? Uh, He's foreign. He understands what he wants to understand. And, he, you know, and everything else, he's just like, oh, I, you know, I, I misinterpreted what you said. All right. But, yeah, so I'm looking to make a statement. I'm looking to be the freshest fighter that I – that I've been to date, and you know, I'm I'm definitely expecting some sparks in the first round. Kareem Klein delivering packages and delivering KOs. April twelfth, he steps back into that cage. Triton fights twelve. You don't want to miss this one. You get this too? Yeah. It popped up in my house. Yeah, y'all. I was coming out of the gym today, and some dude in a coach just handed me this. Sh- I've been called many things in my lifetime. Destroyer of worlds, crazy obsessed, violent. To be honest, I am nothing more than a collector of things. I am now on a hunt to collect the most skilled warriors of the human race. Those chosen will have the honor to fight at the Triton Fights. This is your day. Train hard. Fight harder. Your legacy hangs in the balance. Welcome back to Inside Triton Fights. Now, on fight night, you see the finished product of a fighter. You see him all polished up after a very long training camp. But you never see what goes on inside of those training camps. My broadcast partner, Dave Della Rocca, a noted brown belt and uh, jiu-jitsu coach, we mic'd him up for a segment that we call Rolling with D-Rock. What's up, guys? It's D-Rock from Triton Fights. I'm here with Andrew Stock. He's fighting April 12th on the next Triton event. Uh, I came down to Long Island MMA to get some training in and uh, see how Andrew's training is going, leading up to the fight. Um, we got some good roles in before. We're familiar with each other. We've trained on several occasions before. I've called a lot of your fights, so uh, we're not unfamiliar with each other. So um, you feel good. Yeah. You know, I got to come see how you feel. Training with these never easy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's always a, a little fun. We always find ourselves in a position that afterwards we're like, wait, how did we get there? And that was pretty funky. So it's always a little refreshing because I know if I'm doing that with people like you and we're getting in these positions, uh, definitely to translate well come fight night. Yeah. It's good for me too because I feel like um, I get to know your game more. So when I watch you fight, I can really speak to the experience about what it feels like or what you're doing. Um, so it's beneficial for me too. But um, what's the story? How are you feeling? You get, you're getting ready to, to get back in there. We're about a week away. Has the weight, has the body, has the mind. You still look handsome, so that's, yeah. that's positive. I don't know about handsome right now. You know, I'm probably in desperate <laughs> need of like a haircut and beard trim, but I feel good. I'm feeling sharp. 
my body's felt the best that it's felt in a long time. I got back to doing some things that I uh, may have taken away from the last couple camps, and I've just kind of refocused, rededicated myself. You know, weight's awesome. You know, this is probably right in line, if not a little bit ahead of schedule from where I normally am, so the cut won't be too bad. I'm feeling strong overall, and uh, you know, just push to the finish line. So what's, um, what's different this time around, if anything? I mean, definitely have a lot more focus on the outcome. Sometimes I was a little like able to just say, you know, what's going to happen is going to happen. This time it's kind of become an obsession with me, thinking about, you know, coming off two hard-fought losses, you know, last one being razor thin of a decision that I don't want to feel like that. And it's been a while. It's time for me to get back in there and, you know, to get back to where I was and doing what I was when I was on my five fight streak. You know, I got to just dig deep and kind of take yourself to a dark place sometimes when you're training. I'm glad you didn't take it there today with me. <laughs> um, so you're coming off your last fight, I, having obviously been there for a majority of your fights and calling them, I thought that last fight was, it could have went either way. Especially that last round, you know, you had a submission in deep, you know, um, it was a tough fight, it was exciting. Do you feel that your performance wasn't up to par, or do you feel that it was just kind of a judge's thing? It could have went either way. I mean, obviously, you lose, you always want to improve things. Win or lose, you want to improve. But, like, what's your focus here? Do you feel like you lost because you didn't do something right, or you had a close fight and you, you got to work off that either way? I mean, it's a mix of both. Like, at the end of the day, of course, I'm going to think it's a close fight, and I think I had a really good chance at winning it, depending on how you want to look at it. But that doesn't change the outcome now. So, you know, how I feel about whatever it is doesn't change that on paper, on the record books, that's how it is. And well, I mean I more for your mindset me. here. I mean, like, the, the record books are written, it is what it is. But for you and how you approach this fight, because I know for me, coming off of uh, a loss that I had, it was a controversial loss. It was a, uh, I'm just going to go out and say it was a bullshit stoppage. And for me... Even though I knew that it affected me a little bit, it came in off my head like, man, I got stopped, I lost, I got, you know, mm -hmm. and it affected how I approached my training. Do you feel that at all, or? Uh, I mean, I feel a drive, like it definitely kicked my drive into, you know, overdrive for this one. I, you know, immediately after I was fuming, you know, I really wanted to just say, oh, it's because of the scoring or like how they want to look at it. But at the end of the day, you know, like I got to say myself and I got to gut check myself because as much as you want to justify it as something else, I want to say, oh, it is that, you know, it, I think I round one round one, round two was clearly him. And I think round three, you know, it depends on if you score my on bar attempt being close or him being on top. And at the end of the day, the judges went with that. So that's what it is. And I got to tell myself, I didn't finish the fight there. You know, at some point I should have broken away, secured another takedown, or finished this elsewhere to seal the deal. I had my opportunity, I didn't take it, and it doesn't matter how me or you know other people have felt because the three that decided it. So it's like, all right, I'm not gonna let that fucking happen. That's the that's the winner's mentality right there. That's, I felt the same way. It was my fault for putting myself in that position. I got to work harder to get that. You got to give your, mentality. You got to give yourself the gut check because it's so easy to rationalize, and the easiest person to rationalize is to yourself. Like I can just sit there and be like, it doesn't matter. It's because of this and that. Look. At the end of the day, I think I could win that fight nine times out of ten. I didn't win it the one time that mattered there, and I'm gonna just take it. You know, it pushes me. It fucking eats away at me. I hate losing. You know, I've dealt with losses between wrestling, martial arts, a bunch of other things, and I fucking hate it. But at the end of the day, like, it's not gonna define me unless I let it. And so by bouncing back, to, you know, April 12th, that's where I get to show it. Well, April 12th, we'll see Andrew back in the cage. You'll see me with a mic in my hand, and uh. All things go well, we're putting that mic in this guy's face, April 12th, tune in. April 12th, Triton Fights 12 returns right here on BR Live and fighting on that card. A featherweight up-and-comer, probably the flyest guy on the Triton Fights roster, Tom Picciano joins us right now. Tommy, how you doing, man? Good, Danny. How you doing? Can't complain. We're talking fights. We're talking Triton Fights 12. You step back into that cage. You're going to be fighting at 145 pounds. 
Uh, we'll talk a little about your weight cut in a little bit. But just tell us about how the training's going. I know you're over there at Long Island MMA with some real big studs. How's everything going? Dude, we got the best camp in the world. I love it there. The coaching staff is great. I got great training partners. We all push each other. We're more of like a family than a team, to be honest. Everybody, um, you know, if somebody misses practice, you get your ass reamed out for that. Not even by the coaches, by the team. We make sure people are there all the time. We're always working, and that's why we're coming for everybody's neck on the roster. Long Island MMA runs the show, period. That's it. Yeah, no, last, your last event, 6-0, six, and oh, six fights, uh, six wins for Long Island MMA. We'll be back in action with a lot of fighters on that Triton Fights uh, 12 card. But let's talk about your fight, Kelvin Sterling, brother of Aljamain Sterling. Um, I know you're not going to really care about that, or do you care about that? Uh, tell us about your opponent and what you can expect on, uh, on April 12th. I expect another win out of myself. Like I told you the last time, I have nine minutes. Is it going to take nine minutes? I'll be damned. I like that. I like that a lot. And let's talk about this weight cut, man. Uh, you you fought your last fight at 145 pounds. You fought four fights uh, uh, for Triton fights at 170 pounds. And I asked you, at, well, first of all, I saw you, or I thought it was you, at the uh, the weigh-in. And I said, who is that over there? Oh, that's, that's Pichiano. I was like, no, 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 that's not. I couldn't even, you were unrecognizable at 145 pounds because I've seen you fight at 170, you know, 175 Talk about that last weight cut, and, and you know apparently you, you did it for no reason at all. Yeah, pretty much, just because I felt like it, because I wanted to. So why, yeah, yeah, so. can you, yeah, elaborate a little more. T tell us some why you would uh, go down from, from, from uh, 170 to, to 145. Well, um, I have ambitions of taking my <laughs> MMA career to the next level 100%. My days do not stop at amateur, and... Um, I probably could fight at any weight class I wanted just because I'm an insane individual and I don't care who's in front of me. But I figured now, you know, while it's the amateurs, I learn how to uh, cut the weight, get it down to a science, see which weight is comfortable for me. And 145, that's my division. I can make the weight. It's even easier now than it is last time uh, because I've done it before. I know I could see the numbers on the scale. And that's it. I still walk around. I walk around, and I, when I grapple and when I hit in the room, everybody tells me that I still feel like I'm 170-plus pounds. What do you so, walk around at, uh, you know, when you're not, you know, after a fight? Do you balloon back up? Like, where's your weight at? Um, well, last time I stepped into the cage around 158 pounds, 160 pounds. So I blow back up pretty quick. But then um, my normal walk-around weight is, you know, in between 170, 180 pounds. <laughs> so you sit there, and you'll drop 40 every you know for every fight that's that's wild yeah pretty much i yeah. mean but you know when you got the right diet and the right coaches and the right teammates and you know you got the discipline and you got the right mindset anything is possible man it also helps when you're 20 years old right having that crazy metabolism yeah yeah that certainly helps uh, so one day can we see tom picciano have like a you know a weight loss plan we can see you on, on instagram you know hawking like uh your your diet plan on how to lose 40 pounds in in, in six weeks 100% that is the plan in the near future. I will be, I could possibly sell this diet program. That's why I will not release well, it. I want to be partners now. I, we could be business partners because that was half my idea. So I want like 40%. <laughs> we could work some. Oh, let's work some. Now let's talk about the fights. Um, you're an up and coming, like I said, up and coming fighter on the roster. Last fight, you you, you uh, stopped your opponent, and afterwards you you showing the the belt. You showing the belt sign. I know you want a title shot. How much? How important is it for you uh, to become the Triton Fights uh, champion? Uh, it is pretty important to me because it's almost like, even though I've never had it, I know it's mine. So it's almost like I'm watching somebody else walk around with a piece of property that is mine. So wouldn't that piss you off? Like if you know that, like, hey, that's mine. But somebody else has. I hear you. And if you win this fight, you know there there are some speculation out there that you can fight the winner of the Wilson Dre Joni uh, match, and that is the main event at Triton Fights Twelve. Thoughts on that? Um, to be quite frank, if I don't get it, I don't know what else I have to do. I think you'll get it. I think you you know keep keep the focus. I know you're not going to look past this opponent. I know that Dre Joni's not going to look past this opponent, but that could be a, an explosive fight. Tom Picciano versus a Vilson Joni. We shall see. He's got to get through Zesalon first. <laughs>
That's true. That's the, our main event at, at Triton Fights 12. At that weigh-in where, where I saw you at, you rocked the mink coat. I also uh, gave you a name right there, Tom Minkiano. That's another thing <laughs> I want royalties on. What can we expect? Uh, I know like you like to be flashy at the weigh-ins. What can we expect on, at weigh-ins? What can we expect on that fight night? Do you have anything special planned? Uh, well, I definitely got some new drip for the uh, for the weigh-in, that's for sure. Drip or drown, and, right, uh, Yeah, baby. Sink or swim. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, secrets, man. Secrets. Two weeks. You can't give up anything. So the mink is out. So we can expect not to see the mink, or can we see something, maybe a, like a new jacket or something crazy can you give us a little hint uh i got i got that new new for you guys i i i i got something new for you okay all right he's not going to give up anything but he will be stepping into that cage april 12th tom picciano he is a featherweight on the rise a featherweight you want to keep an eye on and he fights april 12th here right here on br live the tom pooch division make no mistake about it too yeah popped up in my house yeah y'all i was coming out of the gym today and some dude in a coach just handed me this sh i've been called many things in my lifetime destroyer of worlds crazy obsessed violence to be honest i am nothing more than a collector of things i am now on a hunt to collect the most skilled warriors of the human race those chosen will have the honor to fight at the Triton Fights. This is your day. Train hard, fight harder. Your legacy hangs in the balance. Special thanks to Tom Picciano and Kareem Klein for joining us, uh, taking the moment out of their training camp to, to come talk to us here on Inside uh, Triton Fights. And like I said, April 12th is the day. April 12th right here on BR Live. Go out and download the BR Live app. If you haven't already, you can watch uh, the fights, Triton Fights 12. You can watch it on your phone. You can watch it on your tablet. You can watch it on your, your smart TVs. You don't want to miss this jam-packed card that we have for you. All things culminating with our featherweight title fight when Vilsan Joni takes on Zulan Kusayanov. Two title fights, nine fights in total. Everything gearing up for April 12th. The space at Westbury here on BR Live. We'll see you on fight night.